So I started the recording. So today we're going to cover poster design. And this clearly, um, I will be expressing my beliefs, my thoughts on what I think good poster design is, which applies to your next assignment, which is to do a movie poster, but it's a very specific kind of movie poster. The movie poster that you'll be doing is that if you were to create um, a movie based on your life or your life story or an aspect of your life or a moment in your life, it doesn't have to be all encompassing, but it's about your life in some way. What would the title of that movie be and what would the, the image or images that you use look like for that movie poster? And how do they help convey the, the movie that you would be making? How do they further the story? How do they complete the story without seeing the movie itself? Okay, that's basically what movie posters do. I'll talk about in just a couple of minutes. So that's the next assignment. So let's talk about um, the size for a moment of the movie poster that you'll be doing. It will be tabloid size, 11 by 17. And again, it should be between 200 and 300 pixels per inch. So how do you guarantee that the movie poster that you'll be making is of that size and that dimension? My recommendation, and I believe I did this for the, um, the postcard assignment too, I guess I have to review some of my own uh, videos here to tell you if that's the case. So if I stretch this out, so you can see this a little better. What I would do before you do anything, th you know, think of it like being in a, in a painting class or a drawing class. You have a fixed size of paper or a fixed size canvas, don't you? When you start a blank canvas. So let's start with that. So I'm going to go ahead and Go to File, New, and this pops up, okay? Now, it can pick from some standard sizes. These are re recent sizes that I've used, but how about if we select for print? <clears throat> and you can see that they have one tabloid size. If you forget, the width for a tabloid size document is 11 inches wide, and it's 17 inches high. And so I'm going to go with a higher resolution, but as I said, I don't want it to be any less than 200. And that will depend on the images that you use. So I'm going to click OK. There we have. You're guaranteed that whatever images you put in here will fit this document. So again, if I use my um, image that I have of bagel, Okay, that bagel is my dog. She's laying here right next. So if I wanted to use this image, and I'm not sure, you know, would this fit in here or if it did? Because this is a horizontal image, so how much of the, the poster would it take up? Because remember, the poster needs to be um, 17 inches tall by 11 inches wide. Well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this because I want to, I'm going to go ahead and bring over the whole image. Um, I could just bring over her. I could just select that individual layer. Um, so let's do that. I already had this broken down into layers. Notice that I'm just moving that one. And if I move it up to the untitled and I drag it down and I let go, well, that's a pretty good size image. So I might have to cut part of her off or I might have to um, reduce it in size a little bit. But, you know, it's already a pretty good size. Now I could bring in another image of a beach scene or something like that so that, you know, bagel is, you know, important to me. And, you know, it's an important part of my life. So maybe it's, um, uh, it's themed around her. Now you also, the other things that you will need for your movie poster are as follows. I'm going to show you, um, some samples of student work. So if I go back to my page here, and I'm gonna drag this down so everybody can see this okay. So if I go to 
Um, and I've shown you these before, but it doesn't hurt repeating. If I go to Kurt's classes and select Kurt's classes, and I scroll up here, okay, I'm going to go over here and look at some of the movie posters. And I'm going to pause that and move off of it. And as I mentioned, um, Isaac um, was a part of a punk band, and that was an important aspect of his life. So that was how he themed his movie poster, and that, in fact, is an image of him. Now, notice it isn't realistic. It's posterized. It's, the colors are not true. They're skewed um, to convey, you know, a particular kind of mood or thing that he was going for. Now, what you also have to include in your movie poster, it can be multiple images. It doesn't have to be a single image. But you have to create a title for your movie, which he has done. And you have to include movie credits. And I'll show you where you can get those in just a minute. So Isaacs is a good example. Another one by Oscar was pretty good for him. Family life was important. All of the images that he used, oh gosh, excuse me, were clip art. He found them off, you know, the inter from the internet using Google searches. And they're pretty generic. So this, these are by no means images of him, but it clearly emphasizes um, the fact that um, family is important to him. And then I guess what lies within is that there was another one on the way, another child ready to be born. But again, nice title design. You know, the choice of your typeface and the font that you choose can be very important in conveying a particular kind of mood or theme or feeling about the movie. And it should, the, name, the title that you give the, um, the movie, as well as the type choice that you make or type choices should help um, further the images that you're using their meaning. Okay. And again, he uses credits. So another one that we have here. This one, as I said in the past, is by Richard Mallory. He was a ringer of mine. He already had a degree from Long Beach State in art. So he knew how to paint. He knew how to draw um, when he entered the class. So um, he was able to take images that were his own, and he was able to modify them and um, create feeling that he, I mean, he was a very quiet, introverted person. And that is pretty much how, what this um, movie poster, um, the theme of this movie poster and the mood that it conveys. Okay. So um, in a second, though, I'm going to talk about, let's go ahead and look at a couple more. Oh, this is a little bit different. So um, this would be for our advanced student. So um, Kevin, if you're listening, if instead of doing a movie poster, if you would um, rather do, and I think this would be a better choice for you since you've already done a movie poster for me in a previous semester, that you do um, a public service poster. Now, the theme can be anything you want. In this particular case, Carlos chose global warming. And so what he did is that he took and he created a view of New York City um, being underwater and here all, you know, using the theme of Noah's Ark. So he didn't say, have to say global warming. He just says sea levels are rising, take action. Boom, very straightforward, um, high concept. Everything about the movie poster works really, or the movie poster, the, um, the poster works really, really well. And again, he used, uh, all of the images that he used were taken directly from um, the internet. He, none of these, did, um, he didn't take any of these himself. So these are pretty good examples. Now, where do you find the credits? Well, you can do a simple Google search. So that's what I'm going to do here right now. And I'm going to put um, images of movie poster credits. So it doesn't have the movie poster And 
here you have all of these images, both in black and white. Now, some of these, the best ones are um, ping files, which have a transparent background, or if they don't, those are probably the best one, like this one up here in the upper right-hand corner. This would be a good one to use, and you can always reverse it out so that it's white instead of black. But it's kind of a ready-made for you. You don't have to create the credits yourself. So there's lots of them here. You know, try a few of them, see which ones work best. And again, you know, depending on the kind of poster you're designing, you want it centered. This one is kind of flush left. Usually they're centered. Um, the type, the, the font that they use is a condensed type. Um, the credits are there for legal reasons, typically. And if you get ideas from Netflix and other um, streaming services, they generally have eliminated those in their designs. They're unnecessary, but for the posters that would be out front of the movie theater, then you would see those. So here you go. Here's a bunch of them ready for you to go. Now, about movie poster design itself. So I'll probably get down early today, very early. So what I did to get for you to get ideas for yourself for different um, movie poster designs or themes, or I just typed in award-winning movie posters and then clicked on images. And you can download these yourself. Now I'm kind of, I like, there's a number of new ones that I like, but there's a number of old ones that I like as well. This is one of them for the Goonies, it's kind of cool. This is more of a, a montage, you know, emphasizing all of the, the, the characters in the movie and the theme, you know, them finding this hidden gold, this whole hidden um, buried, you know, pirate's treasure and that sort of thing. Um, but let me say a word about poster design in general, especially for movies, is that imagine if you will um, just a physical movie itself, if you were to look at the real, a movie real, that it is, um, it contains thousands and thousands of individual cells that play, at, um, or frames, I should say, that play at 24 frames per second. Okay, so there's thousands of them. Well, what the title and the title design in the movie poster itself should do, that image, is that if you were to take an entire movie and distill it down into a single frame, what would that movie poster look like? So, you know, if you're going to take one aspect of your life and distill it down into a single frame, what would that be? Now, my preference kind of harkens back to the old days. Um, and that kind of dates me a little bit. But I kind of like single image movies, movie posters the best. Um, they kind of hit you hard. Um, and oftentimes the ones that are used probably more frequently these days are montages or collages. But that doesn't mean that they can't be done well. In fact, there's one right here that I like especially well. This one here for Sicario. This is a beautiful example of a montage. But the trick to doing a montage, I'm gonna come back to sing, single images in a minute, um, but I wanna show you some examples <clears throat> of montages. In this particular instance, there's one, two, three, four main images, but notice that within the profile of this woman, there's another image. Now, the key to designing a montage like this is that you have to develop a hierarchy that, you know, what is the most important or the image or what is the image that will be used to frame the others. And clearly the profile, she may not be the most important image, but it does become the most important design element to frame all of the rest and all of the rest of the images to fall off that. And they do kind of, the way it reads is that you do read this first and then your eye comes down and around and it follows in kind of a circular fashion. 
Now notice that if you want at the top, if you want the lead characters to be distributed along the top, and the title of the movie doesn't have to be at the top either. It happens to be down here near the bottom, just immediately above the credits. But that's the way that this one was designed. Now, some of my other favorites happen to be, and I'm gonna have to do another search for this, but we'll go ahead and do that while everybody's here. Um, and I'll come back to this one. And I'm gonna look at um, a couple of them. I'm gonna look at Indiana Jones. Um, that's an old one. Okay, so let's look at images for Indiana Jones. So all of these typically are, not all of them, but most of them are montages or collages. But they're constructed in a very deliberate way. Um, notice the title again, Raiders. It kind of harkens back to um, an earlier time during uh, there were ser serial movies that played on Saturday afternoons that kids would go to in the 30s and 40s. So that's the look that they're going for. And it also sort of has a comic book-like feel to it. Um, this is something that it would be very doable in Photoshop using some of the, the filters that they have available and layers. But notice the, the design of the poster itself. It, it, it comprises all of the images of, or the, of the people, the main characters in the movie. But notice the principal one. It's Indiana Jones. Okay. And then all of the other characters are secondary to him. And so what does he do? He uses this big kind of um, South American image that goes behind every, every, everything. And this becomes almost like a target to frame Indiana Jones. And then he uses that as a frame to move all of the other characters around the outside. So that's why this works really nicely. He's developed a really strong hierarchy. The same would be true for this one here. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Now, Indiana Jones is a key character, but he's not the only main character. Han, Sean Connery, his father, who plays his father, is also important. But still, Indy is the, the key character. Okay? And so he's the largest. He reads, he's the first read. And then his father is the second. And then this is kind of a nice, and again, he uses a nice circle here to frame the rest, but then also notice the other lead main characters or, or secondary characters that um, go about or, or the corners of each of an of, of a outside frame here that are visible but aren't as important. Now, I'm surprised that they let Indiana Jones go, the title of the movie is so small, that that isn't even bigger. But again, it still has room in, for the credits and they're designed in here. It has a secondary title here. So they all work, you know, really, really nicely. Now this one also, okay, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. A similar kind of approach that it's a montage again with the head of Indy being the prominent character. And then we have the female secondary lead and um, his short round or whatever the guy's character's name is here. They're the lead, you know, the main characters, but they're smaller and they trail off so that when you read him first, or read her second, him third, Indiana Jones. And then you see this is kind of a background image, you know, that was part of that ritual that played in the back of the movie. So all really good. And it's not easy to do a montage, but you know, these are really good examples. The other good examples would be, and again, this dates me, but it goes back again. But if we put um, uh, Star Wars movie posters, so I'm doing a search for that. And I'm again, I'm going to look at images. So I suggest, you know, that you do and you look at some um, to get some good ideas um, for composition. 
And you can use your own images or images that you find off the internet, but use these as a guide for your composition. Now, this is one of the first moving posters. And it's um, this is before, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. Han Solo became a main character. But at the time, you know, look at um, the, the lead character, okay? And again, all of these characters follow a nice triangle. So that's a nice, stable, solid image. So you have Princess Leia, you have, I and mean, I'm drawing a, a, a blank on his name. But anyway, and C-3PO and um, R2-D2, okay? And you have Darth Vader in the back. And his image is the largest of them all, but notice that the tonal quality, the, the range of tones, is so dark with a few highlights that it really blends mostly with the background. So even though it's the largest in image in the movie poster, it sits back behind the rest. So all of these I think are really, really good, you know, are really worth looking at. And, they, and in later movies, they get even more complicated. And now you can see that Han Solo is one of the more important characters, okay? And that they all, how they're organized, that they're kind of balanced, you know, have these lightsabers that go out, okay, that draw your eye inward to the center of the image, they all work really, really well. All of these are good ones to look at. Um, I have a question from Andy Hernandez wanting to know, can you use drawings, illustrations in your posters instead of images? Um, yeah, I would like some photographic imagery used, but it would be a nice balance. You can use both. Sure, why not? Okay. Yeah, you can use illustrated images. I don't see why not. But again, some of my favorites in here go back not just to, to montages, but to single images. So this would be a good one here. This one, boyhood, where it goes from a boy, it, 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 the, um, the movie, um, covers an individual from boy to manhood. And it's the same person, but notice how the image is torn and how they have an image of him as a boy and as an adult that match up really nicely. So it's a single image that really, um, you get the sense already that this covers a large span of time, okay? From childhood to adulthood. And that's pretty much what the movie's about. So it's a nice one. It, it works really, really well on a conceptual level. Um, some other ones that work really nicely too. There was one that I had for, that I saw from Mars. Um, where did it go? No, the movie poster does not have to include an image of yourself, no. But you need to think about it, you know, because I'm, you know, you know, how does this movie convey some aspect of your life? Um, where did it go? It was here somewhere. Well, let me show you some, again, this dates me, but you know, one of my favorite ones is of E.T. movie posters. Um, E.T. because they're really pretty much single images. So let's just look at images here. And this is probably one of my favorites where it's taken from a scene, you know, not exactly, but close, where the boy in E.T., you know, actually, you know, E.T. has him fly. And they have this really good image of the moon in the back that serve as, serves as a great target to view him in silhouette and then you have a few trees in the foreground and again a very 
important, um, you know, kind of hand lettered uh, title for the movie. Um, E.T. Very simple, direct to the point. Again, with all the credits. Okay, so that for that's one of my favorite. This is probably another pretty good one. It wasn't the oops. Oh shoot, I want this one right here. Let me go back. Uh, let's see, they get kind of these get kind of hokey when they have E.T., that's the movie, and then they have all the characters in here. And it's not that they're not important, but it really doesn't enhance or doesn't reveal anything more about the movie itself. So I feel that these type are a little bit, they're, they're less successful. I guess this is the one that I, this is my favorite here. Let's click on that and see if we can't see a larger image of that. Yeah, there we go. Let's scroll up so we can see this. So, you know, clearly the, the hands, the fingers touching, taking from um, the Sistine ceiling, Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling. Okay. Then we have um, an image of Earth below the ET. And this again works really nice. And you use the Earth below as a, as a place to put the, the, um, the credits perfect location for it. So it obscures the credits a little bit. Really, really nice. So let's go back to all of these again. And let's find some others again. Let's see what we can find. Um, how are we doing? We probably have plenty of time here. Um, Anna, can the movie poster have a fictional approach rather than a non -fi Yes, it can. It can be nonfiction. Um, it can be um, fiction. It can be humorous, it can be serious, it can be whatever you want. It, the, it's open-ended um, in many respects, but I'm trying to give you um, a theme so that it, you have to think about your life in some way. And, you know, then it, that will, you know, maybe there's a specific event in your life or how you feel about yourself or how you felt about yourself how you feel about yourself, you know, 10 years ago versus now or something. And it can be done very seriously, or it can be done, um, you know, done with humor. Okay. You know, this is pretty typical. Assassin. And notice how the, the credits and the awards and stuff are there, but there's a tint over it so that it it becomes less important. And the title is layered on top of the image itself. So layering is a, is a, a distinct possibility. And you see the title of the movie and you see her as, you know, together as a single um, element. And then they have a little quote here that's above her that's curly smaller in type. And notice how they've taken one of the S's and put it behind her so that, well, actually both of them on either side. So that integrates the title and the image um, together. So that's another important kind of design approach. You know, this is pretty typical. Um, and this could be one if it were about yourself. Maybe it is one that's an image of you, but notice how they've really exaggerated the colors. Um, and again, the, they, ha, they don't have credits in here, and I do want you to have credits, but maybe the title could be moved up just a little bit and you could have room for credits down here. And then all the, if you wanna put, um, you know, up at the top or below, you know, these are a little bit too large for my taste, but the awards that this movie has received, and if you want, Again, other things like this, never get up, give up. They're kind of like subtitles or, you know, they enhance and give you a little bit of information about the movie. Um, never give up, you know, never give in. This is another, you know, it, it's pretty straightforward movie poster. But again, look at the, the type choices and how Emmanuel Jal and more child and that are all really compact 
So this is where you're going to have to use some of your typesetting skills that you've um, maybe have practiced in lesson seven so that you can adjust the letting or if they are set as separate elements that you're going to go ahead and you're going to place them together yourself. Okay, so that they read not as separate entities, but even though it's multiple words as a single unit and multiple typefaces are, are used in doing that. Okay, um, let's see. What's some others here? There was like, you no, know, every time I'm, I look for these, now I can't find them. Field that are on the roof is kind of classic. You know, maybe if you want yours to be a classic movie poster, like Casablanca, you know, this has kind of a, a, a retro feel to it. And it's really not all that dissimilar from the Indiana Jones movies that I've shown you. But, you know, it, it's really not that good, to be perfectly honest. It's a, one of the best all-time movies ever. But the movie poster is pretty typical of the times because they didn't, they used illustrators at the time. And actually, that's a time that I kind of prefer, actually, the movie posters of the 70s. This is another really good one with Johnny Depp um, in it, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. It involves um, drugs, clearly, and the distorted kind of reality. And there is the, there are tools that you can use inside Photoshop to create these highly distorted images. So if that's something that you want to do, that would be, you know, would clearly be legitimate. Anything in here is legitimate if it clearly, um, um, Convey, conveys the story um, clearly. Okay, so that would be another good one. Um, where do we have here? Come on, where'd it go? It was the, the Mars story. It was pretty good. You know, most of them are ho hum, to be perfectly honest. But um, once in a while, you come across one that's really, really nice. Uh, why can't I find it? Um, I kind of prefer the ones that are a little bit more illustrative, that aren't straight photography, that um, change colors, that maybe or you know combine images together in, in interesting ways. Um, so that you have more of a, rather than a multiple appearance, it has a singular look to it, you know, a, a single image, even though you might have multiple images. Oh, come on, clockwork orange is good. Good stable triangle of composition. Um, I guess I could show more. Oh, I'm not seeing the one that I saw just a moment ago. Now, Titanic is a is a horizontal movie poster, but I don't want horizontal for this. So that's part of being a designer is fitting the. You know, this is nice for a singular image. Ryan Gosling, and Claire Foy, First Man. You know, really. Um, you know, it's photographic, but enhanced highly um, in Photoshop, where you get these extreme highlights and beautiful coloring. That's yeah, really a good one. This is pretty typical. This one here, one for Amelia Earhart because they, they're turning it into a love story. So it has the two main characters and their heads are placed in the clouds, but um, it, you know, it's Amelia. And notice how they've enhanced the A in here to look like a scarf that she was known for wearing. And 
the type choice that they made really is in keeping with uh, her name and how she um, uh, displayed herself. You know, and she's standing in front of the airplane that she um, she flew. Uh, you know, nice bright, you know, almost silhouetted against, you know, a sunset. That's nice. So there's lots of good ones here. I'm just finding the one, trying to find the ones that kind of stand out to me. They're probably a little bit better than all the others. This is kind of a nice approach. Um, or they're taking the title and then using the title as a mask and placing images inside that. So again, it's the sense of where you're using multiple images, but you're they're intertwined with the title itself when you're seeing it as a single image. And notice how tight the type is set so that you just see it as, even though it's three words, it's set as a block. Um, That's enough. Are there any other questions about this? That's basically what I wanted to cover today, just a short day. And then, um, as I said, this Wednesday, we're going to have a critique of the postcards. Whatever ones I received, um, I'll put them up like I'm doing this today, and I'll talk about them and tell you where I think they excel and maybe where they could be improved. And if um, those of you um, who did them or participating, then, um, you know, I'd like your feedback to hear from you. You know, what you, if you had any aha moments, if you um, faced what challenges you faced when you were doing the movie poster, what was the hardest part? This is a nice one, too. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. It's a very powerful movie, The Life of Pi. lion boy and this lion so it's really it's sort of a montage but it's not where they've integrated these elements together really very nicely and again made the title at the center overlapping the image very nice Um, you just go to the top. When is the movie poster due? Probably in three to four weeks. But I want it to, you know, to have some thought behind it. This is more um, conceptual than the other. And it requires you to put together images that you feel will work with the title of the movie and that the title movie will work with the images vice versa that they one kind of plays off the other and one enhances the other now you know this one clearly showcases eddie murphy but you know it, it works pretty nicely he reads first he's a first first read and coming to America in the credits down there. And notice how the perspective of the red carpet really draws your attention to him and moves up. And you see Eddie Murphy, he's the title. And then the background image here is nice. Um, you know, color is really exaggerated or complements the colors that you see in here, the reds, really beautifully. What else do we have here? Let me just go all the way. Oh, this is was right here at the top all the all the time. So again, this is another one that I find pretty useful. Again, it's combining really just two images, but making it almost monochromatic so that it ties those images together. And you know, it's clearly about, you know, the you know, Matt Damon is the star of the movie 
he's the one that draws you to the movie, you know, that want to see it. And I think the title of the movie is, you know, Mars or something like that. But, you know, it's done well. So it's a nice large frontal image of him that just pulls you in. And notice how the title of the movie, done almost in a triangular format, brings your eye up into the, um, his face itself. And again, it has room at the bottom, that open kind of landscape at the bottom for the credits and that sort of thing. Very nice. I mean, they're all, there's a bunch of these are nice. I don't know if any of you have seen the Green Book. And it's, you know, it's just pretty, this pretty much illustrates the movie to a T, you know. And again, it's, it is colorful, but it's almost monochromatic. Notice at the background at the top here. Now, probably what I would do is I would move, because you need to have credits, and this one doesn't have credits. So what I would do is I would probably move the green book up here. And I would take where it inspired by a true um, movie or a true, um, a true friendship. That could remain up here, but I would probably make Viggo Mortensen and uh, Mahershala Ali a little bit smaller. And then that would leave room for the credits down here. Okay, so that's another possibility. Serenity, a lot of people like that torn page image, but it really is pretty effective. And I think from a design point of view that that torn aspect of it really draws your eye down and through the image. And then you're forced to look on both sides and see both of the images. So look hard at, you know, I would, I would spend the first week or so doing nothing but what I'm doing here and then download some of those images, the ones that you just on an intuitive level really inspire you, that you think are really strong, that, you know, you may use them or you may not. Maybe you'll, you, you like the title design. Maybe you like the composition. And so maybe in one you'll use the, you'll take, you know, borrow from that movie poster, the title design, because you think that works nicely and it would integrate well with the composition that you're planning on using. And then if you don't use your own images, make sure that the images that you use um, is, uh, uh, I was kind of distracted here. Um, just make sure that you use images, if they are from the internet, that they're high enough resolution, that they're big enough. Okay. So when I, when I said, what should we include in our credits? They can be the, the images that I talked about. That um, They can be, they're just kind of gibberish. They're placeholders. Um, if you go online, and let's see if I have them here. No, where did I get them? Well, let's, let me do another search here. So I'm going to go ahead and do another search. And so anonymous attendee, if I put in movie poster, if I do a search and I put in movie um, poster, oh, it was up here. That's where I put it. Never mind. I put it in a different uh, browser. So I'm going to move the browser down here. If you just do a, a Google search, and put in here movie poster credits and look at images, there are tons of them. Some will work for you and some will not. I think the best ones are the ones that are ping files that have a transparent background. And you can always invert and you can use white instead of black. So whichever works for you, a black movie poster credit or white, it doesn't matter. You can use one of these and you just download it and use it. And there's a bunch of them. Some of them are flush right. Most of them are centered. That's how movie posters go most of the time. And they will be at the, you know, always at the bottom. So however you design your movie poster, make sure that the credits go at the bottom. That's how they fit. Oh, Jurassic Park. That's another really good one. That's a really good movie poster. Um, again, the title and image 
integrated together really beautifully. Really, really good. Okay. Again, some of my favorites. Some of them, you know, is asked, you know, can you use something that's illustrative? Um, sure. Um, and this would be a good example of that. And the same with the uh, Indiana Jones um, movie posters and that sort of thing. They can be very strong drawings. They can be two-dimensional and very graphic. Or they can be stylized realism. They can, it can be a whole bunch of different approach, approaches. It's really up to you. Okay. So we go back to my image of, you know, bagel here. And if I wanted to bring the beach back in there, I could, and I could turn this into. Um, so let me hide this for a second. And let me go back to the bagel movie, or <laughs> the bagel movie. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this up and I'm going to select all the layers just so that I bring them all in. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select the first one, scroll down and hold down the shift key and select the last one. So they're all selected. And now I can click and drag and hopefully they're all coming over into one. I'm going to hold down the shift key so it centers it and see if they come over and there they go. And now I have all of them. Notice all the layers. And now what I could do is I could stretch. This would work really nicely. I could go ahead here and um, with all of them selected, I could move this down like so. And I could probably clone this a bit and I could stretch part of this out so that the sand extends and I have a perfect location for you know, the credits. I could move this over a little bit. And then we could try another thing here. I could actually, you know, there would be a good place for my title here. And if I, I could also try, um, if I were to select the background here, I could try um, to edit. And I could try to use something like um, content aware scale to see if I couldn't extend the background or if I couldn't, then I could isolate the background and create my own. Okay, so there's lots of possibilities. Okie doke. Where are we at time wise? Well, I've used up a pretty good chunk of the hour. So does that help everybody? Yes, no? Any more questions? I hope that these are fun. You know, I mean, you could, if you see yourself as, you know, your alter ego is Superman or something. So maybe the title of your movie has the feel of the Superman credit so that it's three dimensional and goes in space, but it's about you. And that if you've taken a photograph of yourself and you're, you know, donning the pose, I guess that was one of my favorite movies too. That I forgot. There was one in particular that was that really came across really, really strong. Let me see if I can find it. Um, Superman movie poster. Because there's a bunch of them. But there was one in particular that I thought really was really, really striking. Because it integrated, it was just him. So let's look at um, images here, see if I can't find it. And they probably won't have my favorite here. Well, this is, no, that's not it, but this is close. Uh, it was just of him, you know, Clark Kent opening up his, his, his jacket and his chest and revealing the Superman uh, costume or the logo underneath. That was one of my favorites. This is it. Now this is horizontal. Um, let's look at this is the, the bright one here. This one I thought was brilliant. Now it could be easily adapted to a vertical movie poster with credits and everything. But this really conveys <clears throat> and this could be you instead of 
you know, the S, you have your initial or something. So you've kind of um, adapted um, a concept from someone else, but you've used your own image images um, in a very similar fashion. That would be legitimate. But this was one of my favorites, all time favorites too. Just for concept and simplicity and how well it conveyed um, the movie in just boom, you know, just a single image. But notice how it's combining the elements. Clark Kent in his suit and then underneath his suit is Superman suit. Boom. And you don't even see the face or anything. You don't know that it's Christopher Reeves or anything. You don't have to know. It could be any of the people who have played Superman. Okay. So there you have it. We're pretty much done for today. Um, let's look at participants, see who's here. So unless there are any questions, um, you guys are free to go. And in just a minute, let me make sure that I have everybody here. Um, I'm taking a roll. And Giovanni. Um, Yeah, I've got everybody now. So if you guys want to leave, and I will um, pause the recording now, and that will be it for today. So um, I'm going to say goodbye. And remember, on Wednesday, the only thing that we're going to have is a critique, and that's it. And next, a week from today, I will do lesson nine, which um, covers a, a movie poster. It's a movie poster um, lesson. Okie doke. Okay. So by now I'm gonna go ahead and pause the recording and it will be posted shortly.